Hello, on this edition of R&B Reviews we're going to be looking at 500 Days of Summer. The movie is about a uh, ton played by Joseph Gordon-Levitt. He is a writer for a greeting card company and one day he meets Summer played by Zoe Deschanel. Summer is an assistant to um, Tom's boss and they soon kind of start to develop into a romantic relationship. But it gets a little, sometimes the relationship's a little rocky because Gordon-Levitt's character wants a boyfriend girlfriend relationship and you know find someone he can you know have a good relation loving relationship with while Deschanel's character wants to you know just remain friends so I must say I definitely uh, walked into the movie theater and I was when I came out I was I, it was definitely refreshing because most um, romantic comedies that I see you know it feels very cliche you know like the like the two characters you know they may not notice each other or they may not like each other at first and but and then over the course they kind of grow to love each other and there's the big happy ending. Here it didn't feel so much like a cliche to me. It, I f it definitely felt more creative in my opinion. I agree. There's nothing cliche about and to even it's a hard movie to put your finger on too. I mean it, you can't just brand it as a romantic comedy. This movie's got tons of different elements, but it it it's got very it feels like very realistic situations relatable situations yeah. and characters exactly i mean this definitely doesn't feel like it came from the mind of a hollywood screenwriter mm. you know this is whoever i don't know who wrote and directed this movie but they definitely did a good job with nailing down realist with realism and having a very creative way to tell that story yeah and like you said you know i can i could relate to a lot of the situations because they've happened to, some of them has have happened to me and it was definitely a brush air another thing that i noticed um with um with you know the romantic comedies that Hollywood puts out, sometimes they bring in leads that people know and they um you know just to make money at the box office. But here you know Joseph Gordon Levitt's um done some they well actually both him and uh, Zoe Deschanel have done mostly independent films. But I recognized Gordon Levitt from a TV series called Third Rock from the Sun and to see um and I thought they had really great uh, chemistry. You know it felt like they were a real couple. Um, in my opinion, and you know, I thought that it definitely felt very realistic, and like you said, the situation is realistic because I know oftentimes Hollywood will cast somebody like Katherine Heigl or Zac Efron, you know, just to bring in somebody, and sometimes they may not quite be suitable for the role, but here they were real, they had real great chemistry here. They did, and and I felt uh, Gordon Levitt carried the movie great. He was a terrific leading man. He was very, he was very funny, and he was very relatable, and you really felt for him, and you wanted him to succeed and be happy, because that's what he, his character believed in in the movie. Don Chanel, it feels, I don't know, I didn't think she was doing anything in that movie that she hasn't done in other independent movies I've seen her in. But uh, Gordon Levitt, I thought, did a great job, and there's really no, nothing I can really knock the movie for. It was very creative. I liked how it told its story, and... Yeah. It was very funny. Yeah, like the split screen. Like um, there's well, there's one split screen where they the two fight, and then what they do is usually in a situation where well, in the scene, Gordon Levitt's in his bedroom, he's upset, and Deschanel's in her bedroom, and she's obviously upset. What they usually do, and you know, in a usual movie, is they cut back and forth. But here, they create a split screen. Gordon Levitt's and his bedroom is on one side, and uh, Deschanel and her bedroom's on the other side, and it's simultaneous. Simultaneously, you can see what's going on, and I like. I like the use of the split screen in that sequence. I really like how they use it later on with another scene where they show Gordon Levitt's expectations of what's going to happen in that situation and the reality on each mm -hmm. side of the screen. Oh, yeah. I really thought it was, it was, it was funny and heartbreaking at the same time in the scene. Mm -hmm. But it was, that, it was that sort of creativity creativity the movie had that was a big breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. I mean, there wasn't, there wasn't anything about the movie where it felt like we were treading ground that's already been gone over. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I really didn't care too much for was the voiceover. Now, some now I I can understand why they put that the voiceover in because if they didn't, it probably wouldn't have made much sense to me. But I wasn't crazy about the voice. I found the voice to be a little intruding, and sometimes voiceover takes takes um, takes me out of the picture in some others' movie. Here, I 
even though I felt it was kind of necessary, I just felt like the voice wasn't, you know, you know, it was too dis the voice was too distracting. I kind of felt it went with everything else that, what the movie was throwing at us. I mean, there's a lot of things in the movie that will take you out of there, like you know the musical number they have in there in the movie that's really <laughs> funny, and the uh, and like the the split screen with the expectations and reality. And there's one scene where Gordon Levitt's in a movie theater watching a movie screen, and he sees himself in like all these. New Age French films from the oh, 50s and yeah, 60s. Those, it's like a montage to those old foreign films. Like I saw one yeah. for, uh, what was it, The Seventh Seal? Seventh Seal, yeah. yeah. And uh, it was very, uh, you know, you could tell the kind of crowd they made it for. You know, they had knowledge of film and stuff like that. It was a very good independent movie. Yeah. And it's one of, like The Hurt Locker, it's one of those movies where it started out, you know, in big cities and now it's slowly been expanding into more theaters. So I would definitely tell somebody, if it's playing near you, to go ahead and go out and see it. It's worth saying. Yeah, because who, yeah, who knows how long it's going to be there. Like, it could get pulled within a week or two. You yeah, know? to make way for some, you know, some big, loud Hollywood movie. You know? oh, yeah. I would definitely say go see it, but I know in, it, it may not come to some areas. So if they, if you can't, if for some reason you mi someone misses it in the theater or it never came to your theater, it's definitely worth checking out on DVD oh, yeah. when it comes. Put out. Put it in the back of your head and just wait until it comes out on DVD because it's definitely worth renting. It's worth seeing if you can get to a theater. I mean, this is a really fresh, new kind of movie, and I liked everything about it. Yeah, and plus it wasn't too long. It wasn't too short. It was just right because usually sometimes when I watch a film, I look at a movie, I'm like. It's a little too long. I probably could have cut something out here and there if I was the editor, but here it, I, I didn't have that thought at all. It flowed nicely. I mean, even though it goes back and forth, there's no point A to point B in, in chronological order. It goes back and forth between the relationship, you know, from early on, later on, then it goes back to early on, and all. I like seeing those contrasts. Like, they would show him... They would show him, like, try and use a joke on her and it falls flat. And then you show where the joke came from. I really liked how they did that. Yeah, and, and going, oh, how I love her. And then later, they go back to later when their relationship's uh, going somewhere. She's like, I hate her. I hate everything about her. I, I, it's definitely worth checking out. So if um, so, I would definitely say if it's playing near you, consider going to see it. Or if it doesn't come near you, definitely. I think it's worth renting. Definitely. Okay, so that's... Um, that's our review. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe. If you want to leave a response, do that. If you have seen uh, 500 Days of Summer or you liked it or disliked it, please go ahead and share your thoughts because we're very interested. And I'm Rob. I'm Brendan. Thank you for watching R&B Reviews.